mystery box. Hey y'all, welcome back to Carbon Scoring, the best place for comics history and action figures. I wanted to give a shout out to JRB3 Collector for including yours truly in his influencer ranking. Joey did an awesome job with this video and pointed out that some of our mystery boxes are not so mysterious, which is true. I put some together to be able to tell a better story. Joey also does a great job of keeping me straight when I screw up the figures, which I appreciate. And he put carbon scoring in the A tier, which was pretty awesome. So Joey, this mystery box is for you. All right, so straight out of the attic, let's see what's in this mystery box. <laughs> oh, it's a bunch of old Toy Biz figures. Okay, oh, this is going to be so good. Okay, let's, uh, let's just grab one and see where we want to start. Wow, okay, so I have a bunch of my old Toy Biz figures on display down in my secret lounge, but obviously not all of them, and I don't even know what is going to be in here. So here's like a a battle-ravaged Wolverine, so he's he can, I guess he his claws come striking down, you know, a little bit of articulation. I love how, how that's all torn up, that tiger stripe. Looks like that says 1993? 95? Actually, sometimes I can see it better here. Oh, what a great start. Okay, so awesome Wolverine to begin with. Hey, hey, here's another Wolverine. So here he is in like his spy costume. Uh, was this like part of the Reavers or when he was in like the Weapon X program? I think he was supposed to have like a weapon that stayed there. Of course, he's got kind of a little bit of sort of the, the twist and slash action but this is sweet. You can fold this in front and he gets the mask right there. Oh, so it's so awesome. So I think I only have like one, one or two Toy Biz Wolverines down on display. So there, there could be a ton in this box. I do remember what this is. So this goes with Galactus. It goes with one of the first Toy Biz Galactus figures and Oh man, look at that. It's like broken. So the wires are, are frayed. But I think this plugged in and when he held it, it would light up. Like this was his his mechanism to like dig into a planet so that he could devour it. Oh, that is so cool. Hey, speaking of Galactus, here is Benji Grimm, the ever-loving blue-eyed thing. And this was from the Fantastic Four line. And it has, because you can tell on the cartoon, they went with the more John Byrne look with the white belt and then the dark pants as opposed to the Jack Kirby, which was uh, reversed from that. This is just such a good, solid figure. Uh, you know, he's got some It's Clobberin' Time action, and he's got a little thumb print back here. So this one says 1994, but you can, when you use the, the thumb, he'll, like, swing and do that. And, and I'm hoping there's... Oh, I see some more. Oh, I see a lot more. Okay, good. Let's see if we can grab some more Fantastic Four figures because this thing is really good. I mean, again, 1994, but look at the detail in the sculpt. If you went in and did, like, some overwash on this, oh, it would be so awesome. So, okay, here's a torch, and this is a good one. He's a little bit broad. I always think of the torch being really kind of thin, but I think he's broad because it allows for the action feature. So... Let's see if this will... Oh, it's supposed to have like a flint in there. And when you pull it, like the little flint rock will cause sparks. And so it creates like a flame effect. But that's still a really nice torch figure. His head does bend. He's got, you know, he has kind of the standard 5 POA articulation at the time. And I imagine that one's probably 94 as well. Yeah, something. 95. This looks like what that one says. Oh, look how clean this is, though, for 1995. Oh, and here is Mr. Fantastic. Now, I remember reading that this cost extra for Toy Biz to make because they've got, like, the stretch Armstrong. I want to be careful with this because, again, 94. So you're talking about, you know, almost a 30-year-old figure. And you can see some of the plastic has kind of changed color over time. Some of that may be because it was up in the daggum attic and it's like 200 degrees up there uh so i hate that that it doesn't match but there's that classic john byrne look that they had you know on the cartoon and so here's you know here's three of our four fantastic four looking really good like that's a really good collection and then i see this one so let's grab it so here's johnny storm i don't know oh look what's in there 
like a really sweet wasp figure. I think I I think this is a little different than the one that came with the Avengers, the original uh, Avengers five pack. But that's an awesome looking wasp, and she's super tiny, you know, compared to that five inch Johnny Storm figure. Oh, we may have to put her aside. She may have to go down to the secret lounge. Oh, look at this. So I kind of love it when they have kind of a half transformation torch. Again, he's really pre-posed because of the way that that shoulder is going to do. I mean, he's he, you can't get him down at his sides. But look at how his hair, like instead of having his hair on fire, it's like mussed up as though it's maybe about to catch on fire because they really use kind of the same yellow color for that. But yeah, the the flames, and it's kind of sculpted moving up his arm there. Uh, but he's like fully torched from below. God, that's nice. That that looks good too. Uh, I don't see any more Fantastic Four right off the bat. So let's, let's, hey. Ooh, I remember this. Okay, so first off, that's a Secret Wars Wolverine. And it's not in too bad a shape for a figure from 1984. Now, obviously he doesn't have the clip on uh, claws, but this was the very first appearance of Wolverine in action figure form, and still pretty good. You know, there's some rubbing, you know, it looks like he's got a little bit of a, a bite mark there at the top of the mask, but really solid brown suit, kind of John Byrne era uh, Wolverine there. And then this Wolverine was from like one of the Water Wars lines, but I remember using it, uh-oh, gotta, sorry, this happens with age, had a, a pad come off there. I remember using this Wolverine with my uh, new X-Men display because the, that new X-Men box set that had all the Dave Cockrum designs, Sunfire, Banshee, Colossus Storm, Nightcrawler, it was so awesome, but Wolverine did not come in that set. And so the original Toy Biz Wolverine from the animated series didn't really match. It didn't have quite as enough sculpting detail to fit. And so I would use this one in there. See, he's got more articulation. He's got ankle articulation. He was a little big, like he's, he's decent sized. You can see again, next to this five inch human torch, he's a little big for, for Wolverine, but I thought that the sculpting style kind of matched that box set. So I, you know, until they came out with an even better one, this was one that I had in there. Oh, it's so awesome. Okay, now we're getting into kind of some some random X-Men figures. And you guys can certainly correct me. Is this Trevor Fitzroy? Seems like maybe that's who this is. He's like kind of like a reverse baboon. He's got like a yellow butt for some reason. Who thought that was a good idea? I mean, what what's the what's the thought process there? But, you know, green hair, green green uh, goatee totally 90s cool got some cybernetic arms so i'm thinking that's trevor fitzroy and then this this i'm fairly certain is cameron hodge so cameron hodge i did read those early issues of x factor and he was like the businessman that convinced cyclops and the original x-men to uh form x factor with the ruse that they were actually hunting mutants when what they were really doing is they were looking to find mutants to then protect them. But like they, they ticked off all of the mutant community because here are the original X-Men and it seems like they're out there trying to hunt, hunt down mutants. And Cameron Hodge was like the businessman who did that. I guess at some point um, he ate some bad McDonald's because it looks like he's got McDonald's French fries growing out of his head and turned into some kind of cybernetic warrior robot thing that had like a, this looks like it had a, a water gun feature to it. So probably, yep, yeah, probably squirted right out of that. So cool. You know, again, I love how Toy Biz would create figures that collectors want to kind of fill out their lineups, fill out their collections, but still do it in a way that appealed to kids and, you know, the Hamburglar, I suppose. Yeah, good stuff. Oh, now here is absolutely one of the best Toy Biz figures. So I'm probably not going to pronounce it right, but it's like Chod. It's like C-H, like apostrophe O-D. This is one of the Star Jammers. And still, the only place that we have gotten Star Jammers figures is in the X-Men 5-inch line. So the Star Jammers did appear in the cartoon, and we got most of them in this line. And still haven't seen them since. 
I, I got to say, I got to give credit to Dave Cockrum. Dave Cockrum was the artist who was the, was the, uh, the artist at the time of the all new X-Men and his ability to design characters is just unmatched. Again, think about some of those new X-Men designs, Banshee, Sunfire, like how cool was Sun Thunderbird? I mean, like unbelievable, like costume designs, character designs, and Dave Cockrum could just crank them out, just one after another, after another, after another. And so he designed all of the Star Jammers as well, including uh, Chode here, or Chod, or however you pronounce it. He also had like another character that like fit up on his shoulder. We may find it down here in the box. Oh, I just glanced down at the box. I just glanced down at the box and saw something that we are so overdue for a classic Jack Kirby Blastar. So Blastar, again, classic Kirby villain. I mean, if you can't tell that from looking at that head sculpt, that that is a Jack Kirby villain, I don't know what to say. But so he had like, like blasting things that came out of his hands. He lives in the negative zone with uh, Annihilus. And like whenever the FF would go on adventures down there, they would have to deal with Blastar. I know him because he did make an appearance during John Byrne's run on FF, which is what I read when I was a kid. But, oh, we need a Jack Kirby Blastar. They gave us one that, like, stinks. I mean, I have it on display in my Fantastic Four shelf. But it doesn't look anything like what it's supposed to, like a good Kirby Blastar. Hey, we got another Benji. Very nice. I like it. Uh, Let's grab this. Strong guy. Oh, cool. I, this probably, that probably goes with somebody else. So thankfully, we got a, a strong guy uh, build a figure not too, too long ago, within the last couple of years. And it's just basically a sized up version of this. Look at that sculpting detail on that face and just the 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 heft. We'll, we'll get our Johnny back out as our kind of standard reference. I mean, look at how how massive those shoulders are compared to a normal five inch figure strong guy and i'm a sucker for those blue and gold x-men uniforms like anytime we find one that's in the classic blue and gold i love it just absolutely love it now this is something weird so venom right i mean duh but like it doesn't really i guess it moves a little bit i want to say this is like some kind of weird like Japanese thing that I picked up somewhere. It definitely doesn't need to be in this box. It needs to be in my symbiote box. Ooh, I, it looks like there's a place where the tongue fits in. I wonder if there's a date anywhere on this. I don't see one. Okay, see, that's why you call them a mystery box because you got no idea what you're going to find. And that includes this. Now, I'm, I'm 99% sure this was like in the X-Men line. Again, I think it's one of those water... Water works once you squeeze it and it squirts out. It's not Toad. Like, it's not like Toad from the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, but some kind of frog type of thing. Somebody will help me. Oh! Gosh, I barely remember this. When did this come out? 95. So this must have been like a, like, like Series 2 or Series 3 of the Fantastic Four figures. And I guess they were going for a more animated look but this almost looks like more of a fisher price toy i mean look at how good the sculpting is on this the detailing the facial sculpt all of that the articulation and then this is like sesame street thing like this is like like he's looking for like mr snuffleupagus oh man that's so bad it's awesome i don't even know what to do with that oh here's wolvie so space wolvie because you know like batman like iron man you can't get too much of a good thing. And so that's actually, I think that's the the head, or it's very similar to the head from like one of the very first Wolverines. But then he's got the cool pop-out claws. Uh-oh. He may have you the shooting the bird claws. Not exactly sure why that middle claw is a little bit longer. I guess, uh, you know, if you shoot the bird in space, no one can hear you scream. I guess that's what goes on with that. Oh, this is totally out of place. I, just completely out of place. So here we have a DC Martian Manhunter. And not just any Martian Manhunter. This is the Ed McGinnis version. So you can see Ed McGinnis. We'll talk more about Ed McGinnis as we continue to do our panels to uh, plastic series. And we look at the specific art styles and the figures that are created by different uh, of different artist uh, designs. But this broad, huge 
massive kind of squat. This is Ed McGinnis, and he did a great run uh, on uh, some DC comics, and so they they actually produced a ton of like Ed McGinnis figures. This needs to go somewhere else. It does not belong in this box, but hey, Martian Manhunter hanging out. Oh, my favorite cartoon ever. Spectacular Spider-Man. So this was a Burger King giveaway. Yep, there it is. You can see Burger King right on his shoulder. And what what year? Let's see if it's on here. 2000? 2002? Anyway, so this came with your Burger King kids meal toys. And you press the button and it flaps out. Actually, you know, not a bad version of the web wings. Everybody knows how much toy makers have struggled to get the web wings right. But really accurate to the cartoon, really accurate proportions, and a very, very accurate head sculpt to the cartoon for a Happy Meal toy. I mean, it's pretty sweet, I think. That's awesome. Oh, I see this. I'm going to grab it. This was with Johnny Storm. So I think this was, this may have been like the flame effect one, so you could put him on there and launch him. Here's another one of those. I have four kids. If you guys don't know that, I have four kids. So back in the day, it was always pretty easy for me to get Happy Meal toys because everybody just got one, and then I got to keep the toys. Oh, man, there's a ton of Wolverines in here. Okay, so this is that uh, X-Men, gosh, was it X-Men Evolution? That cartoon, it was actually, it was pretty short-lived, but Toy Biz did a decent set of figures with it. And so this one, you know, it's got the, it's got these play features back here. Well, they don't, okay, so that one, so you get the punch. Oh, you get the swinging punch with that one, and then does it do... I can't tell what this one's supposed to do. He's only got one set of claws, but it definitely has that X-Men Evolution animated look to it. Oh, nice. Ball shoulders. Not bad. So, you know, we're getting there. Again, this was 2001. So, again, this one's 21 years old. So this, this as we like to say, this action figure can drink. He can go out and buy a beer because he's 21. And he looks pretty happy about it, all things considered. Oh, it's just it's just like Wolverine City. Okay, here is <laughs> this is crazy. Like, was it Albert? Was his name Albert? Like some kind of crazy robot Wolverine? Hopefully, there's arms down in there somewhere. Oh man, that Toy Biz line, that Toy Biz X Men line. I mean, they were just cranking out new figures left, right, backwards, and forwards. If you had appeared in three panels of a comic, you ended up with a figure. I personally have always been pretty partial to brown suit Wolverine. And it all depends on, like, what was the Wolverine when you first started reading comics? And so, for me, Wolvie was in the brown suit. And so, this is kind of like my Wolverine. I like this. I like that he's, like, hunched. You know, he's kind of got that Art Adams bent over look. He's got sort of the, the almost like a Joe Maggiera sort of face going on there. Decent kind of stumpy claws, stumpy arms. We do have some early kind of ball shoulders. And, oh, good. Oh, there's forearm articulation, which is kind of crucial when you're doing Wolverine because you can't really get his claws to do anything otherwise. Still just kind of the simple, simple V hips there. But, and his feet are obviously pre-molded. So you can put him like this, but he's going to stand like that because his feet are molded to be kind of set in that crouching position. Good toy. Good brown suit Wolverine. Let's look at... Oh, man, that's like a Marvel... That's like a Marvel Universe. It looks like a movie figure, though. Is that from, like, X3? Probably. I don't know whose cape that is, but we'll put it on Sabretooth. He looks pretty. Don't you think? Look, he's got his nails done, and he's got his cape. That's a, He's a pretty Sabretooth. Oh, so much stuff in here. Shatterstar. Oh, this is so Rob Liefeld. I just can't believe it. So Shatterstar is kind of one of your Deadpool, Wolverine, you know, Deadshot hybrid guys. And he's, he's so he's wearing like a boxing helmet with like padding around. You know, Cable had one star eye. Shatterstar's got two. Somebody's got one sword. Shatterstar's got two, because that makes so much freaking sense to have double-bladed swords and, you know, pouches everywhere. Just, he's got a huge ponytail. 90s, 90s, 90s. I mean, here it is. This is the 90s personified in 5-inch scale. Rob Liefeld. Sh oh, one big shoulder pad. Not so much over here. Got, got your symbol on the chest. 
Oh, that's just great. <laughs> I love it. That's so good. Here is, oh, we saw this one. So here's a different version of that Wolverine. The reason why I have more than one of these is some of these I didn't get back in the 90s when they came out because I was in school. I was broke. I was in like college and, and grad school. I didn't, I didn't have any money. And so I would go back and I would buy lots of used figures on the cheap at like flea markets or off of eBay. And what that meant was sometimes you ended up with duplicates of certain, certain figures. Okay, so Archangel. So here's Archangel, but this is not the original Archangel because I had the original Archangel uh, that came out with the very first X-Men line of figures. Now, you want to talk about game changers? We had gotten some Marvel figures in like the Marvel Universe line from Toy Biz, but they upped the game so much when they when they went to the X-Men line. He may have like the year of like 92 or something on it. 91. So it it's the... The body is basically the same as the original, but the original, God, that's sharp as crap, actually. I can't believe that this is meant to be the improvement. The original Archangel had little missiles that fired out because, as you remember, I'm sure you do, when Angel lost his wings during the Fall of the Mutant storyline and uh, Apocalypse took him in and created him as one of his four horsemen as Archangel. He gave him metallic wings that could shoot blades out from him. And so Toy Biz replicated that by having like a little tiny, easily losable piece of plastic at the tip of one of the wings. Instead, now you just have these like death points. Like those are sharp as crap on both sides of that. But anyway, really cool Archangel head sculpt and great paint application for 30 years ago. This, this is 30 years old. Oh, that's that's awesome. Oh, I love this one. This one this one is great. So, I think this was in like a comic shop exclusive line. So, it's pretty much Captain America. First appearance Captain America. So, Jack Kirby, Joe Sennett, Captain America. You know, you can tell, obviously, he's got a different, uh, different neckline there. The shield, which actually only appeared in like, I think maybe only one issue because... The people who had come out with a character called The Shield that looked exactly like this said, uh, knock, 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 you need to get rid of that shield or our lawyers are going to make you get rid of it. So Cap really only had this in like the, his very first appearance, but it's become something that's a, a huge part of Captain America lore. I want to say this is the same body as the uh, Marvel vs. Capcom cap, which I use that with my... Avengers display for a long time, but then they repurposed him, repainted him, and gave him a new shield. And honestly, man, look at that. Oh god, look, it's got the the like the rubbery. So this could this could fit on any number of figures, and with the size of it, it looks like it would fit well with a six inch figure, because he's a little bit bigger than your typical five inch figure. I mean, here's Blastar, a huge character. And you can see Cap, he's not quite six inches, but he's definitely bigger than five inches. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Deathbird, right? This is like, uh, the Shier bad woman priestess, like Lalandra's sister. You can see where her wings are supposed to be on there. There's some kind of play feature. Uh, bad guy, alien, Shier woman. Cable! Oh, I mean, come on, guys. Are you serious? This is so 90s awesome. Look, huge, giant stuff he can talk into his giant microphone he's got huge boots he's got you know got satchels all over him i you know they were silly but they were fun the 90s were just stupid fun it was so great I, this is a good figure i'm oh god look at this look at how great this is so was this in that was this in that box set 97 Wow, so this one's this one's a little bit newer. You know, a lot of these like early mid nineties, but then this this beast, good grief, this is almost as good. Look at how great that head sculpt is. This is about as good as any beast that we've gotten in, in Marvel Legends. It's got huge feet, big hands. I do think they reused a lot of this sculpt for the human beast that was in the in the box set, but man, that's a great beast figure. Psylocke. Or, yeah, right? Anyway, I'm still waiting for, like, the, the like, sweet English Betsy Braddock figure to come out. All the ninja Betsy Braddocks are kind of making me tired. Hey, who's this guy? So, 
I remember why I bought this. I bought this like at Walmart back in, uh, let's see, I can tell you mm, 2003 because he looks like, it looks like Spider-Man. I think it was in like a Web Wars line or, or Water Splashers line, but it's a reasonably accurate costume and it has a really decent like Todd McFarlane style head sculpt. I might have to think about using this as a custom potentially taking that because that head that's a pretty good Todd McFarlane head I might could take that off and put it on you know some kind of different body of course it has the grooved in web lines which Toy Biz was really good about you know they, they would get kind of muddy sometimes because they had to do a paint wash over the top of it and so sometimes the, to get those web lines grooved in you can see where it would bleed a little bit of the, the black and brown around it but still that's, that's pretty sweet all right, we got some more. Here's another Happy Meal toy. Here is one of Lalandra's webs. Here's Black Lash. So, and he's got like an Iron Man armor stuck to him because he was in the Iron Man line. So here's one of the bad guys with like a whip. And, uh, oh, look, he's trying to do it right now. He's it, look, Well, I guess maybe it's that side. Oh, that's a that's an awkward play feature. Uh, giant green ponytail. I mean... If you had pecs like this, wouldn't you have your shirt open down to your navel? I'm just asking. I mean, you know, if this, if these were your rock hard pecs, would you not do the exact same thing? Of course you would. Absolutely. Oh, here's one of the arms of that Albert sort of thing. Okay. Oh, man. That's solid, too. Okay, this is probably, this is probably the same body as that brown one that we looked at. But this one obviously has the mask. That's a Man, that's a good tiger stripe wolvie. Of course, he gets down with those preposed ankles. He gets down in that sweet crouch position as well. I was always searching. I was always searching for the perfect wolvie, and it wasn't until kind of later that they really started to happen, but they kept getting closer and closer. It's another Burger King toy uh, from Spectacular Spider-Man. The period, end of story, best Spider-Man cartoon. There's the other arm for that Albert thing. He's got his mechanical claws oh it looks like an old school star wars double telescoping lightsaber is what those claws look like okay this is another i want to say this was another comic book two-pack obviously and i think it came like with the cover from when bullseye impales and kills electra look at how nice that is with that soft goods oh that's pretty sweet she's got soft goods here as well so you know, not a lot going on articulation wise, and those Toy Biz women struggled to stand up. But look at how gorgeous like her hair is, and then man, that's a solid Electra. And then Bullseye, Bullseye has a simple but effective costume. But man, they're making that work. That's a good two pack. That if I don't have something, if I don't have them on display downstairs, I might have to hold them out. Like they would go great with the with the Daredevil from that era. Julia Carpenter, Spider-Woman, first appeared in the Secret Wars comic. She was part of, uh, uh, what was it, like Force Works, I guess? So she was in the Iron Man cartoon at that time. Pretty cool. Very choice. Uh, oh, I actually do know who this is. This is Kazar. This is Kazar, the, uh, the savage down in the Savage Land. So the Savage Land is this part of Antarctica that actually has like a tropical climate and dinosaurs. And so Kazar, uh, his name was used by a pre-Marvel Universe uh, Marvel character back when it was like Atlas Comics or one of those. And then they repurposed him. But Kazar's first appearance actually was in like issue nine of X-Men. It was one of the early uh, X-Men issues. And, you know, he's got kind of like war paint. I don't I don't dig that. I like my, I like my Kazar just loincloth and that's it loincloth and flowing blonde hair that's all i'm looking for with a kzar but i guess if you're gonna have like a i don't know like a snake wrapped around his ankle and some bones around the other ankle i suppose that's pretty cool too we'll take it oh gosh so many good ones oh that had to come with kzar because it's a dinosaur and he lived in a place where there were dinosaurs please tell me this is like a happy meal toy because this is so bad McDonald's, I saw it on there. So, no, oh, <laughs> look, oh my gosh. And he's got like safety claws. No, no child is going to be hurt by those claws. <laughs> oh, that's great. Little McDonald's safety claws for Wolverine. That's so good. 
Bishop. I was always impressed by how much detail they got into this head sculpt for Bishop. Look at all that. I mean, he is straight up out of Coming to America. Remember Eric LaSalle was like the bad guy in Coming to America? He was like the heir to the Soul Glow fortune. Back in the day, I always thought that Cable kind of looked like the uh, the Soul Glow guy from Captain America. Captain America, from Coming to America. But boy, did he... He came with some guns, baby. It, it, he's got double guns. Because he's got the guns right there. And the guns right there. Don't mess with Bishop. And blue and gold. You know I love it. Uh, Black Widow. This was... Um, this was a really rare storyline where Black Widow had breast cancer and had to, had to undergo chemotherapy and lost all her hair. That's obviously not true, but uh, I've just somehow lost the hair piece for Black Widow. But it's a pretty sweet kind of like Frank Miller era Black Widow in her gray suit. We have gotten a new updated gray suit, which I'm glad for because so many times we see her in sort of the 70s black suit, but the 80s gray jumpsuit was pretty sweet as well with the, with the widow there on her, on her chest. Who to pick last? Let's let's go with Surfer first. So Silver Surfer had a toy line and it added articulation. Again, you know, they were moving that way. You know, it didn't really happen until true Marvel Legends that we got the kind of ball joints everywhere. But, but this Silver Surfer line was one of the first that really gave us some extended ball joints, both at the hips and at the shoulders. And, of course, he comes with this pretty sweet-looking psychedelic surfboard that matches the paint scheme on his body. And I'm assuming that this is meant to be like a representation of the power cosmic. Now the power cosmic is generally considered one of the most powerful things in the Marvel universe. Yeah, I don't think that's it. That's like the power popsicle that comes up. So we'll give it, but we'll give him a break because he's got this sweet star motif all over this chrome body. So you get a pass on the popsicle hand because you got the sweet star stuff going on. And then let's finish out with Toy Biz just really crushing it on the sculpt of this Super Scroll. So the Scrolls were introduced in one of the very first issues of the Fantastic Four and then came back and, and battled with them over and over again. And so here they managed in this figure to have all of the different Fantastic Four's powers displayed. Look at how sweet that invisible girl, because it goes all the way up. So I love this. So Toy Biz did this a lot too. So this piece is the same translucent plastic. It just has a paint overlay. And so it gives that transition zone from the painted down to the clear, which is such a nice touch because if it was just like, you know, solid and then the, the clear, it would look like absolute crap, but it's not. Obviously he's got the thing arm and he's got some human torch fire coming off. But you're like, wait a minute, there's another member of the Fantastic Four. Yep, Mr. Fantastic. So look, this allows him to have the extending arm of Mr. Fantastic. So that is truly a super scroll. So I hope you guys enjoyed this mystery box. A true mystery, one that I had no idea what was in here. And uh, check out these other mystery box videos. And check out all of my videos. And make sure to hit like and subscribe and notifications so that you can stay up to date with all the cool stuff coming from Carbon Scoring.